Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Definition and this episode we're breaking down Defending Jacob on Apple TV. Normally with my videos, I try and release them on the day that the finale airs. However, with Defending Jacob, I really wanted to give the ending some time and thought as I think there's a lot going on. The show leaves so many unanswered questions. However, if we look at the subtext, I think they provide a clear direction as to what exactly happened in the series. Throughout this video, we'll be going over the way things are left and why they heavily imply one possible outcome. There will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to check out the show yet, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. If you enjoyed this video, then please drop a thumbs up as it massively helps us out, and also subscribe to the channel for videos like this every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into our breakdown of Defending Jacob. You're scaring him. Good, he should be scared, I'm scared. So I have to know. I want the truth. You can be a good man, or you can be a good father. Okay, so Defending Jacob centers around the Barbers, a family of three made up of Andy, played by Chris Evans, Laurie, played by Michelle Dockery, and Jacob, played by Jaden Martell. Jacob is embroiled in a murder trial after a boy who bullied him is found dead, and the story very much focuses on his parents struggling over whether he committed the crime or not. Now from the off, I will say that I do think that Jacob did it, and though the show is deliberately ambiguous, there are several clues as to why this is the case. Firstly is Jacob's attitude in general. Throughout the show, he's portrayed as someone that's a rule breaker, someone that isn't very thoughtful, and someone that will often defy common sense in order to be seen a certain way. He deliberately returns to social media after being told not to, posts sick things on it, and even writes a story about the murder itself that makes OJ Simpson's If I Did It look like a shining example of what to do after becoming a suspect. Jacob was apparently the first one that discovered Ben's body, and he tried to cover this up by not reporting it so that he wouldn't get in trouble. I believe that he wasn't aware of the forensics and that this was a lie. Though there is another suspect, it does seem strange that Jacob was first on the scene if he had nothing to do with it. In addition to this, Andy finds a knife that may or may not have been used as the murder weapon. Whilst we learn that this is a common knife, it does add a lot of weight when tied in with all of the above as there was no real need for its inclusion in the show if it wasn't a point to one thing. As the trial begins, it seems like Jacob is banged to rights, and the longer things go on, the longer that suspicion builds in Laurie's mind, but juxtaposing this, Andy believes his son completely. Even as the boy was growing up, he refused to accept things for how they were, and always tried to turn it so that there was no way his son or family were capable of any wrongdoing. This ties into our view on the ending, and it's also laced throughout Andy's childhood. We learn that his father was a very sick man, and thus he's tried to find the good in others rather than the bad. He defends his son till the end, but it looks like things are only going to go one way. That is a guilty verdict. However, after a paedophile named Leonard Patz confesses to killing Ben before seemingly committing suicide, Jacob is exonerated. Though there is a lot of evidence that points towards Leonard actually being behind Ben's death, including incriminating photographs on his phone, we actually learn that Andy's father was behind it all. Billy Barber, played by J.K. Simmons, had used an ally to force the confession, and thus its legitimacy is unable to be determined. So, once more, any actual proof of Jacob's innocence can be brushed to the side, and in my eyes, the fact that this needed to be carried out is the show hinting at us that Jacob got away with it through nefarious means. Now, this is all evidence on the surface, but what did I mean about the subtext of the show? Well, if we take that Jacob did commit the crime, then that means that every one of the barbers told a lie at some point that broke the others. I'll discuss this more as we get into the video, but we do need to kind of bring it up here so that you pay attention to it. Jacob lied about what happened to Ben, leading to the family being shattered, and he lied about his father, leading to the family being broken apart, and Laurie lied about what happened in the car crash, which led to Annie being left in the dark over everything. Thematically, the show is very much about families lying to one another, and whether they can live with that lie or not. Andy's father even tells him at one point that he can either live with being a good man, or being a good father, and this choice of whether to protect a lie, or to protect the ones that we love, is shown in each of the characters' decisions. Now the cracks finally re-emerge during the family's trip to Mexico. In order to get away from it all, the barbers take a vacation, and on it, Jacob befriends a girl known as Hope Connors. After a party, Hope goes missing, and once more, suspicion turns to Jacob. 
Left at breaking point, Andy reveals the truth about his father and Laurie realises that potentially they may have covered up one murder with another. Now Hope does turn up unharmed but everything is already out in the open and Laurie's mental state completely shatters. Laurie takes Jacob to get his hair cut but during the ride internal turmoil gets too much and she begins to question her son with him eventually telling her that he did kill Ben. Now this definitely can't be taken as an absolute as the character is clearly just saying anything to get her to stop but it does show that he is well aware of what his family think of him. Another thing that we know for definite is that Andy is well aware of what his wife tried to do even if he lies to himself about it at the end. Andy finds a photo album of Jacob's baby pictures in the trash and he correctly assumes that Laurie is in the midst of doing something terrible. He tries to phone her several times and she doesn't answer. Though I have seen some people say that they don't know whether Andy knows if Laurie crashed the car on purpose, him finding the baby photos does clearly point to his awareness of what she's done. Now why Laurie did this is because I actually believe that she possesses the murder gene. Now I may be wrong on this so let me know but from what I remember they only really tested Jacob on Andy's side of the family so Jacob may be carrying some of the darker side of Laurie's which would enable him to commit the crime on Ben. The show concludes with Andy defending his wife in trial and she manages to get away with it even though deep down he knows that she did try and kill her son. Laurie knows this too and clearly racked with guilt she's been reading to him and has said that she doesn't remember any of the things that happened that day. So once more we can take a lot from this subtext. The fact that we know that Laurie did indeed try and kill her son but got away with it is clearly, at least to me, hinting that the showrunners want us to look at Jacob and how similar things happened with him. Jacob was put on trial and it was only through lies told by members of his family that he was able to get away from it. So the fact that we know that everything surrounding Laurie's innocence is a lie also hints to us that everything surrounding Jacob's is too. And he had the opportunity once more to be a good man or a good husband slash father and clearly he chose the latter to protect his family. Throughout his life Andy has ignored the truth much in the same way that he has here and Laurie lying reflects his lie which also reflects Jacob's. So whilst they don't out and out say it, if you look at the similarities between the arcs that the characters all go on, they are all pretty much identical. Now a big question is, will Jacob be able to forgive his mother for what she did? Though the character is in critical condition, the doctors say that there are some encouraging signs so we can take from this that he will get better. He will have to live with Laurie's lie as he is the only one that actually knows the truth much in the same way that she is the only one that actually knows the truth about him. Because Laurie has been willing to murder her own son, I actually think that she will find more common ground with him and they will realise that they have to protect each other. The show actually symbolises this in its final shot in several ways as we see Andy return home. He goes into Jacob's room and sits in the dark, metaphorically showing that out of the whole family he is the one that's been left in the dark over everything whilst Laurie and Jacob both know the truth about one another. On the whole the show really symbolises not only the darkness within the community but darkness within the families themselves. People that knew serial killers often remark on how you would never suspect it and it shows that it's almost impossible to tell if someone has a dark side but that these aspects of society do indeed exist. Jacob was seemingly a good kid but he held a sinister side which was showcased in his writing and also the acts that we believe he carried out. Laurie too had this even though on the surface she seemed fine. Andy is the only one that actually didn't carry out a dark act and though he did lie, he didn't go to the extremes that we know Laurie did and that Jacob possibly could have. This is what the final shot symbolises to me and I love how it's just Andy sat in the darkness, surrounded by it as he's the only one who's not turned to it himself. Cinematography often carries hidden meanings and I believe that this final shot is hinting at him being the only truly innocent one in the family. So whilst the show is deliberately set up to not tell us for definite, I think the subtext is laced throughout in which we can only draw one conclusion. Firstly is the orgy of evidence that surrounds Jacob that pits him at the scene of the crime, gives him the murder weapon, motive and more. Secondly is the fact we see firsthand how someone is able to get away with a crime because the rest of the family is willing to cover for them, much in the same way that Billy did for Jacob. Thirdly is the fact that the show ends on Andy sat in the darkness, still unsure over what's going on and he is not with the other members of his family due to them both attempting horrendous things. I think the hints are all there and whilst even I can't say for definite, when you look at how the show is built thematically, the events that happen in it and the way that it ends, we can only really take it one way. 
and that is that Leonard did it. I got you. I got you in the end. Now it was it was Jake. It was definitely Jacob. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on our interpretation and whether you agree or not. Comment below and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and make sure you check out our breakdown of Snowpiercer, which is going to be linked at the end. If you want to support the channel from as little as 99 cents a month, then please click the join button below. We massively appreciate it, and as a thank you, you get access to content early. If you want to come chat to us after the show, either follow us at Heavy Spoilers or click the Discord link in the description below. Every month we give away free movies to people who are subscribed to the channel, and this month you can win the Marvel Phase 3 Part 2 box set, and all you have to do is comment on a video and make sure you subscribe with notifications on. The more videos you comment on, the more you have a chance of winning, so make sure you get involved. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of June and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is a channel for people who are never missing television, so if that's the kind of thing you like, you need to subscribe to Definition. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.